Okay, this is going to be the next video for taking notes in your Bible. And we're in Revelation chapter 1. And we're looking at 16 through 20. So we're going to close out chapter 1 this time. So Revelation 1, 16. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So what about that word stars? He had in his right hand seven stars. The Lord Jesus Christ had seven stars in his right hand. So what are these stars? Well, what I've got, Revelation 120, right here, tells you exactly what the stars are. Okay, go down to Revelation 120. It says, The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So the stars are angels. The stars are referring to angels. And there's other verses that show us the same thing. So that was Revelation 120. And what else do I have? I've got Judges 520. Okay, Judges 520. They fought from heaven. The stars and their courses fought against Sistra. So right there you have Star Wars. That's where they get the idea for Star Wars. That's stars fighting. Just like Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels. Star Wars. So stars sometimes refer to angels in the Bible. Another one, Matthew 2, 9. And when they had heard the king... They departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. I believe this to be an angel and not a literal star because it came and stood over where the young child was. All right, Revelation 9, 1, another one. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So this star is given a key this is also most likely referring to, to an angel all right first corinthians 15 40 and 41 there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is one there is one glory of the sun another glory of the moon another glory of the stars for one star differeth from another star in glory. I believe that's also referring to angels and showing you that angels uh, are unique. Each unique have their own person, different personalities. But that's angels. That's what the stars are here in Revelation 120 because that's exactly what it tells us in Revelation 116, Revelation 120. So the Lord had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. So let's look at that mouth. Got it right here. Mouth. Matthew 12, 34. O generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Imagine what the Lord Jesus Christ would have coming out of his mouth. The most perfect, righteous heart. Everything he could say or do with his mouth would be perfect and righteous. And Revelation nineteen fifteen, Revelation nineteen fifteen says, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. So, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. That's what he's going to use to smite the nations. That's what he's going to use when he comes to take over and bring in his kingdom. Where you won't have to worry about an election or a debate or somebody being impeached or the votes not being counted properly. Jesus, you're not going to have to vote for Jesus. He's already won. He's taking it by force. And it's he's going to rule in righteousness. There's not going to be any corrupt stuff going on. It's all going to be righteous and perfect. Now Psalms 33, 6, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, 
and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So the same mouth that's going to have a sharp two-edged sword come out of it that's going to smite the nations is the same mouth who made the heavens and put breath into Adam. That's the same mouth. All right. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So, sword. Let's look more at that, that word sword. I've got, let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand. You need to be carrying around the sword everywhere you go. To work, to the doctor, to school, to the store. Just always have it with you. I've always got a a little uh, pocket-sized Bible. I've always got the Bible on my phone. I've always got a Bible in the car almost every time. I like to keep the Word of God with me. And the Word of God in Hebrews 4.12 is described as a sword. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And just like in Judges 3.16, he it says, But Ehud made him a dagger which had two edges of a cubit length, and he did gird it under his raiment upon his right thigh. So he had a dagger with two edges, and as you know, he stabbed Eglon, King Eglon in the gut, and the dirt came out, and that pictures you uh, giving the gospel. You giving the word of God out. And then Jeremiah 48.10 Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Now we don't uh, physically, we're not physically doing the Lord's work. It's a spiritual thing. You know, you we're not using physical swords. We have the word of God, which is a sword. And what this represents is when some, you know, you've got to stand up and say something for the Lord and it's going to cause people to be offended. It's going to cause problems. It's going to cause people to not like you. It's going to cause people to have their feelings hurt. It says, cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Don't be worried about all those things. Just say what the Bible says. Cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Don't keep the sword back from blood. Now, that was sword. That was the word sword. So now it says, And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. That's the Lord's countenance, the Lord Jesus Christ. Malachi 4, 2, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. So Jesus Christ is the Son of Righteousness, S-U-N, of Righteousness. Notice that capital S-U-N instead of S-O-N. He's the Son of Righteousness, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So what a sight that must have been for John as he fell at his feet. In the next verse, John says, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Okay, let's look at that. In Ezekiel 128, this is Ezekiel. It says, As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so is the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. So all these great preachers in the Bible, they're not coming up to him and giving him a high five and saying, What's up, bro? And how's it going, man? And all this stuff. And Acting like Jesus is is just this just another one of their little homies and all that. They're falling down at their face on their face in front of them. You know, a lot of people have this idea, especially because the contemporary Christian scene, that Jesus is just y your bro, but Jesus is still a holy God, and John and Ezekiel, who are a lot more. Uh, manly than me and you fell down at their face on their face and worship God in Daniel 10 9 and 10 yet I heard the voice of 
his words. And when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground, and behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees, and upon the palms of my hands. So Daniel had a very similar experience. So the hand touched him, told him to, to get up, and probably said, fear not, as here in Revelation, it says, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, similar to what happened there in Daniel, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. So fear not. You know, God is a consuming fire. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But if you are a born-again believer, uh, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You should fear God. You shouldn't uh, just live how you want to. You should live pleasing to God. But when it comes right down to it, God is your safe place. He's your hiding place. And he's not giving us the spirit of fear. He's, he's always here. He's always with you. And he says, fear not. I am the first and the last. Uh, Joe Biden may win, but Jesus is still the first and the last. He's the one that comes out good in the end. If you go to the book of Revelation and look, it says the end on the last page. And if you look up above that, Jesus is on the throne. Because Jesus is first and last. Revelation twenty two thirteen. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. So fear not. I am the first and the last. And that's what I have over here. And you can take the notes in your Bible however you want to. But this is how I like to do it. I like to put the, the verse number here. It's just easy for me to navigate. I like to put the word that I put in the references for right here that way it just it's not just a bunch of verses running together i know what each each verse is for and i mean that takes up a little bit more space to add the verse number and the word but that's just how i like to do it okay now revelation 118 i'm he that liveth and was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and of death. Okay, that word liveth. Jesus Christ is not like the other gods. He's not like your false gods you have now. All your false gods that you have now, they're going to die. And they're not going to get back up. All the false gods from days gone by are dead. But Matthew 28, 6 says, He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay. So Jesus Christ did not stay dead. He got up out of the grave. But he was dead. A lot of people think that he wasn't dead. So he says, I am he that liveth and was dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again. It's uh, necessary to say that he was buried because... Showing he actually did die. So he, he that liveth and was dead. And behold I am alive forevermore. He's going to be alive forever. Never to die again. So alive forevermore. And the four beasts said. Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Jesus Christ has the keys of hells and of death. So hell has keys. Hell has keys to it. And Jonah 2.6 shows you that hell has bars. Jonah said, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Hell has gates, according to Jesus in Matthew 16.18. I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hell has keys, hell has gates, hell has bars. Revelation 20 verse 1, I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. 
so another key and hell has chains the angels are reserved in everlasting chains under darkness sounds like a scary place now verse 19 write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter now the things which John has seen that's Revelation 1 through 3 3 talks about the uh, 2 and 3 talk about the 7 churches that's the things which he has seen the things which are Revelation 4 through 19 are in the present for John because remember he was in the spirit on the Lord's day see in Revelation 1.10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. So John is, in the book of Revelation, John has been took forward in time, in the future. So the things which are present for him are things that haven't happened for us yet. So the things which are, Revelation 4 through 19, the events of the tribulation, the second coming, and then the things hereafter, Revelation 20 through 22, telling you how it all winds up, telling you about New Jerusalem, telling you about, uh, Jesus winning the whole thing that's hereafter Revelation 20 through 22 so Revelation 1 through 3 the things which thou hast seen the things which are Revelation 4 through 19 and the things which shall be hereafter Revelation 20 through 22 the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven golden candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. So these seven churches. But first let's look at angels. I believe the we've already talked about the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So I believe every person and every uh, church has an angel. Matthew 18.10, Take heed that you spies not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven there are angels. You always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So they are angels. These are literal, literal angels. I don't believe they are pastors, as a lot of the commentaries say. But then these seven churches, which are represented by the seven golden candlesticks, these seven churches have so many different applications. Like historically, their churches in John's day. Doctrinally, apply to churches in the time of Jacob's trouble. Practically, we can learn from their strengths and weaknesses. And in type, each church represents a different time in church history. And we'll get more into that later. But you can look at these churches in so many different ways. We can learn from their, their strengths and weaknesses. We can take things from them as individuals their strengths and weaknesses or a church as a whole uh, in 2020 can look at these churches and say we need to be like them or not be like that certain church but this has been revelation 1 16 through 20 taking notes in your bible and i hope this inspires people to get into the word take notes in your bible and just be a bible student and get interested in the book. I remember when I got interested in the Bible, the first book that I got a hold of was uh, the book of Revelation, and, and a pastor was going went through the book of Revelation, and I, I filled, uh, filled up the Ruckman Reference Bible with notes in the book of Revelation. And I just remember having so much fun and being so excited about the Bible, and it's just carried on to this day where I'm still excited about the Bible and getting up and reading it every day and it's been 10 years now and in those 10 years I doubt that there's been a day that I haven't re read the Bible and when you get excited about the Bible you just you'll want to read it every day just like you want to get up and eat food every day but this has been Revelation 1 16 through 20